Well, hi guys. Well, no hiking for me today. I'm not feeling that great. You might be able to hear it in my voice. But what I'm going to do today, apart from picking my nose, is show you how I research my walks. So what I look for when I'm looking for a hike, because I like my history, what, I, what sort of um, references I search for, the sites I use, things like that, just to try and sort of help you if you're looking for similar sort of things, okay? So that's what I'm going to do today. Um, let's just crack on and uh, let's see what we're going to do. So, first of all, I look at the Ordnance Survey maps. So Ordnance Survey maps have a wealth of information on them. Uh, the things I look for are things like place names, uh, and there's some really good sites I'll show you in a second. So a place name, things like Gate, for example, normally imply an old medieval or Roman road. So things like that can really indicate it. Um, anything that's in old English letters, normally on an Ordnance Survey map, is a, some sort of historical interest. Um, so things like Cairns, Hill Forts, Stone Circles, and you can see on the screen here, there's a hill fort here, there's an old field system, and these field systems can go back to prehistoric times. Uh, like I say, names can give away uh, uh, things, and I search those as well. Earthworks, shown here. And then, you know, like I say, stone circles are on there, all sorts of wonderful information. My internet's a bit slow, so the map's not doing too good. So the first thing I always look for is that. I'll also look for something like scenery, so your yeah, edges here, for example, if I want to look for an edge or a valley, uh, viewpoints, they tend to show up as this sort of uh, star-shaped symbol. So there's lots of information on these maps that will show you something of interest, you know, uh, and so I, I just have a quick look, see if anything takes my sort of, uh, you know, uh, interest, things like tumuli are always interesting, these sort of star-shaped things normally referred to tumuli which are burial mounds normally bronze age or earlier um, so, so like i say uh, the gray ditch here for example so there's lots of things you can look for edges you can look for trig points uh, anything like that will tell you that uh, there's something of interest lord seat here for example mantor so yeah all that sort of thing will tell you there's something of interest there obviously looking at topography so you know if you zoom out, uh, like the one for 50,000, you can see things like ridges where you might get good views. Here's another classic case. This plus sign here is normally an old road. That's Chapel Gate, which is going back to medieval times at least. It used to go from sort of Edale over to Chapel on the Frith, for example. So lots of hints and stuff there that show you that the view or the, the walk might be of interest. You know, Kinder Scout, look at that, it's a classic piece. You've got all your edges, you've got these cloughs. You can clearly see it's the highest point around, so you're going to get some really good views from there. So it really depends what you're after, after, really. My thing tends to be history, so like I say, the old English stuff like that is always good to look for. The other thing I also do, then, after looking on the map and maybe picking out an area I want to go and do a walk, I'll go and search on Wikipedia. And that's a really good source of information. So for this example, I found Peveril Castle, for example, in Castleton. That looks really interesting. It'll give you loads of interest on the history. There'll be maps, there'll be pictures. So that forms the backbone of what I'm going to talk about on my, on my talk. And there's also normally links to other things. So you can see here quite a lot of history around that, going all the way from, you know, when it was built to modern times. But normally there's good links here, like, for example, here, a list of castles in Derbyshire castles in Great Britain and Ireland, and then all sorts of references. So lots of really good information on Wikipedia. I know some people don't particularly like it. I find it a really, really good source of information. So again, I'll look for that. I'll pick out some key points. Again, place names are, are really key for me. They, they do indicate things like I said before, the word gate, for example, or um, like, for instance, someone I was looking at was Chinley Churn. So if I go across here, find the Chinley Churn, which is near Chinley Head. You know, there's some examples there. So, you know, trial holes, I went and searched that. They were actually trial holes for coal mines. So that's really interesting. There's a disused quarry here. I went and researched that, a lot of really interesting history there. I then went and searched about Chinley Churn itself. Where did the name come from? The name came from the topography and the way it looks. But I also found there's a Bronze Age Barrow just here. Just behind the trig point so you know looking through stuff like that uh, another really good example here which i found really interesting on this one was where i was starting the walk was a place called 
the Peeper Day Farm. And I was like, well, you know, what, what's that all about, Peeper Day Farm? What it turns out is it's a farm and the farmhouse has a glass window in it, but at the start of the day, the sun shines through and lights up the house, hence Peep of the Day. So lots of stuff like that. It's always worth looking around these things. You can see it on the map here, Peep of Day Farm. So I'll look through there. Sheep folds, they're always interesting to look at. You know, chinley churn, trial holes, uh, you know, all these interesting air shafts there, normally for rail tunnels or, or again, mines. And you see there's a couple here. So lots of stuff like that will tell you about the history of the place. And uh, like I say, Wikipedia, that's a really good place to go. Another good site, Historic England. So again, here you can search. So if I went and typed, for instance, Castleton, if I can spell properly. If I went and typed Castleton in the High Peak, this map then shows you all sorts of interesting information here, points of interest, for example, which if you hover over them, that will tell you this list of buildings, for example, if I zoom out a bit, list of buildings, uh, stuff like that. Um, so that's really useful, you know, Peveril Castle there, for example, uh, curtain walls, and it'll tell you information, so you can go and view that uh, information. So here, for example, again, Castle Close Cottage is a listed building. So these are really good and you can zoom in and out that map to see what's in the area. So I always do that and I'll go through and see what else is around there. For example, this one here, you know, what's that? Spittle buildings. If you're going through that list entry, I know that's an old mill. You see some information about it, where it's located, you get grid references and comments, and then you go to the official list entry and it will show you more information. Water mill, now farm buildings, now part of derelict, what it's made from. It'll show you on the map where it is, if anybody's put any comments or photos. So that's a really good example, a really good, uh, uh, if you're looking for sort of, you know, what's around a different area, because there's stuff on here that might not be on maps. So again, really, really good source of information. Another one, uh, an example is what's called gen, genuki.org. That's a really good one for looking at the history of a place. So, for example, this one's around Brough and Shatton. It'll tell you the name of it, where it's located, uh, possibly the meaning of the name, where it's come from. You can get uh, access to archives. The census will tell you, you know, how many people were there, history of the church, for example, description. So, you know, again, travel various directors that will tell you about it, transcripts from old gazetteers from the sort of 19th century, really, history, and a bit about the history. You know, the Romans had a station here near the confluence of the two streams. They found a lot of Roman artefacts, uh, you know, and there's some various pictures and stuff here. So, you know, newspapers, politics, poor houses. So there's a lot of information here. That's a really good, again, if you want to look through the old records to see what happened in, in that place. Another good site for our castles is castleuk.net. I found some castles here that I never knew existed, like this one, the remnants of uh, the old Mott from the Hope Castle of, from Norman times. And again, it will show you maps. It will show you castles that are nearby. So, for example, Camp Green and Peveril Castle are nearby. It will show you on a map, and it will give you very inf information, including grid references, etc. So, again, if you know there's castles in the area, or even if you want to see if there are castles in the area, CastleUK.net is a really good uh, resource. The megalith portal. So, for example, if you're looking at stone circles, you might want to go and find out a bit more information about them. There's an entry for each one here. So if you go and search in here, I don't know, let's go and put Hordron, because I know that's one that's local to us. Go and press Enter. <coughs> search results. Hordron Edge Stone Circle, the seven stones of Hordron. If I go and click on that now, it'll give me more information around them. It'll give, show you a picture, it'll give you the history, uh, lots of detailed information, uh, any old drawings, pictures from different times of the year. Um, so that's a really good site if you know that there are some in the area or you see them on a the map and you want to find out a bit more about them, then I highly recommend megalithic.co.uk, really useful resource. Told you all about the stones and history, any relevant documents, uh, accurate grid references as well. So you've got a 10 figure grad, grid references, which map to use. So that, that is a really, really useful website. And again, this is all free resources. Uh, 
English place names, you can work out what they are meaning. So things like Brough means fort, for example. So if I go and try and find uh, Brough and Borough, there's all sorts of uh, different words in here that you can look up. Uh, there is a site, but it's not working, but there's one that I'll put in the links as a Nottingham one. So you can look at the history, where our name comes from, uh, what it, you know, and, and sometimes that can tell you something about the history of the place. Another thing I'm really interested in is aircraft wrecks. So I've got books that I use, obviously, um, but also there's a couple of good, really good um, sort of websites. So Peak District Air Accident Research, they've got a map with them all on. You can see there how many are actually in the Peak District. I think if I remember right, there's about 82. And if you click on any of these, it will tell you about that. And then you can click on that and it will take you to some information about the crash, when it happened, etc. Uh, and some pictures of it. So that's a really good resource. Doesn't always give you the grid references. Sometimes it does, but it will tell you where it is. Uh, another good one, UK air crash site coordinates, formerly peat wreck hunters. That's a really good site there. They do have the, B ref the references. So you can search by aircraft type, area example. So if I went for the B29 Super Fortress wreck, quite a common one. If you click on that, it'll give you various bits of information about it, okay? So, you know, really, really good resource there. And normally it'll give you uh, grid references, pictures and descriptions, etc. I said there are a couple of good books. I'll also put those in. So that's what I tend to do when I'm, I'm researching. I'll uh, look on the internet, Google. I'll look on, uh, you know, Wikipedia. I'll search all these different historical sites. All of that will give me information on things of interest on that hike, because that's what I'm all about, history and stuff like that. Okay, so, you know, I use Outdoor Active. There are other apps. You can use Google Maps, but I find the, uh, the Ordnance Survey map is really powerful different names you know an example here again look mount famine i did a bit of research on that turns out that mount famine comes from the fact that the land's very poor doesn't give you much productivity out of it for example so yeah that's what i do hope that helps you all out i'll put links to all the various resources i use in, in the comments below um yeah uh, any questions just ask me anyway i'll catch you on the next time hopefully next weekend i'll be out because hopefully i'll be feeling a lot better